We're talking a lot about health care reform this morning, but we can lose sight of derivatives. We turn now to a renowned risk expert who has spent 30 years in the derivatives industry. He says President Obama's new regulatory proposal for derivatives is misguided, and he has a few prescriptions of his own. He's short of G. Das, but knows, is known by everyone as just Das. He's author of Traders, Guns and Money, Knowns and Unknowns in the Dazzling World of Derivatives. Das, let's begin with this. Do you agree that some reform is absolutely necessary in the derivatives industry? Absolutely. I don't think there's any doubt, given that the part that they've played in the present global financial crisis, I think everybody would agree that there is some need to look at the problems. But I don't think necessarily the white paper that was published necessarily looks at the right issues, and I certainly think the banks are going to do their best to avoid regulation of any kind. Uh, well, nobody would expect less from the banks, but let's dig into those specifics. As far as the white paper is concerned, the president's plan for re-regulating this industry or regulating it in many ways for the first time, what's wrong with what they proposed? Well, I think there's a couple of things wrong with it. One is they have some old motherhood homilies, which is capital, transparency and disclosure. I see no evidence that under the new accounting standards, which were put in a couple of years ago, there's an absence of disclosure. It's pretty meaningless, the disclosure, but there's a lot of it. And the second thing they're doing is they are focusing on what we call counterparty risk, which is the risk that one bank takes on another. And they're going to go for a central clearinghouse. And that proposal has been around for about 20 years in various forms. And I don't think that can be made to work. And if you look at the proposal itself, it just basically has the idea of putting a central counterparty between everybody. And certainly it would bring some informational benefits. But fundamentally, we now have one entity, which is the biggest too big to fail that you've ever seen. And if anything was to happen to that entity, then I don't know what would happen. And that whole thing relies on what the futures exchanges do, which is a system of margining. And there is no evidence that on other OTC derivatives, particularly the more complex ones, that the actual margining processes and the risk management processes have been thought through. And there's, of course, the old issue of what is going to go on to the clearinghouse, because this debate that uh, Mr. Geithner took to everybody, which is a standardized derivative, when he was asked by the Senate what indeed a standardized derivative meant, he mentioned that he'd have to get back to them. So we really don't know what's going to go in, what's not going to go out. We also have another fundamental problem, which is there's going to be multiple clearinghouses around the world. The Europeans don't like the American ones, the Japanese don't like the European ones. So we're going to have a mess of these things. And then we're going to have cross-margining. There's a lot of issues to be thought through. Besides which, if you actually look at the way the market operates now, we operate a firm of the clearinghouse anyway, which is with collateral. And that has proved to be problematic in its own way. So I think generally a lot more thought needs to be put into this than has been to date. All right, Das, uh, we only have about a minute left. Give us a sense of what you propose as, as an alternative. Well, fundamentally, I wouldn't do anything now. I think we've got to sort out the global financial crisis. The other issue, I think, is we've got to deal with some more substantive issues, one of which is the speculative component in derivatives. Do we want them just to be hedges, or do we want to allow people to speculate? Should we allow products of uh, unmitigated complexity? How do we do the pricing and valuation, and how do we standardize all of those? Those are the issues that we need to deal with, and we haven't at the moment even begun to address that. This is rather like you know, firing from the hip, but your actual gun hasn't cleared the holster. All right, sounds like we have a long laundry list of issues to attend to. Das, thank you very much. Formerly, Shortagee Das, he is author of Traders, Guns and Money, joining us this morning from City.